Hello and welcome, Inquiry and Creativity. I'm Cameron Lynn, a senior biologist here at MSU, and today I'm going to be presenting to you using a CRISPR-Cas9 system for genome editing to produce dwarf Zay maize, a diploid monoclot plant. This is a corn plant, and uh, I want to find out better agricultural methods for future production in our ever-changing climate. I have four other papers listed here that will be in my proposal, and I'd like to show you how I acquired those papers. I have uh, a folder already set up of papers that I have found and read before, and I've also uh, got a Word document uh, with all those and some notes about uh, different things that I want to do research on in the future. Now. I've also found papers recently using Google Scholar. Uh, you can find this by scholar.google.com. And Google Scholar also provides you with citations in any format that you want. So just to make sure uh, you can get that correct and do your citations right. Um, we'll discuss this later and get back to my presentation. The paper in specific that we're talking about is Enhancing Oxen Accumulation in Maize Root Tips Improves Root Growth and Dwarfs Plant Height. They were uh, looking to solve a problem of how Zay maize uh, PIN 1A and PIN 1B, which are genes in the genome of the corn plant, and they are orthologous to an Arabidopsis gene, uh, AT PIN 1. And PIN is a protein PIN formation, uh, which is kind of common throughout plants that go through a flowering phase. Uh, but they wanted to see if there were biological differences or if they were functionally redundant genes. So if these genes affect multiple different phenotypes in the plant. What's great about this gene is you can physically uh, determine the height of the corn plant after growing it and you can also weigh the corn plant and test for uh, oxen in different areas of the plant uh, like the roots and the shoots and the leaves. Now a uh, secondary problem that I saw that could be a potential issue in this study was uh, homozygosity and heterozygosity and we'll see that in their diagrams uh, what they did to show the differences in gene expression between homozygotes and heterozygotes. They assumed that the auxin pathway is known and controls many aspects of the plant morphogenesis in responses to environmental factors. Uh, they have tested this with Arabidopsis thaliana, uh, a common uh, plant used in, in scientific laboratories. Uh, it is just not commercially farmed. Um, and they've also seen that oxen mutants have uh, revealed a polar transport mechanism in Arabidopsis. So this is from like shoot to root or uh, in an up and down fashion. Throughout this paper, uh, the hypothesis was kind of buried in the results and their conclusion, but they wanted to their hypothesis was, does altering ZMPN1 by overexpression increase auxin concentration in maize roots, in auxin signaling, or participating in ethylene metabolism, offering a new strategy for the improvement of plant architecture with an ideal maize phenotype by altering the auxin pathway. Um, so it, there objective is to make better corn. Making corn that works in drought uh, stricken areas. Making corn that stays standing up in the soil with deeper roots. Or maybe that's making shorter corn so it w w can withstand higher uh, wind speeds or use less material to grow the same amount of product. Um, they did find that uh, the Zimpin 1A overexpression improved resistance to drought stress. And they saw that an elongated root system 
They enhance the endoacidic acid, or IAA, transport from shoot to root, which is auxin. They increased the IAA concentration in the roots to promote uh, root growth, but this in turn dwarfed the plant height. This kind of really relates to what I want to study, but I would like to find out if one of these homologous genes, like Zimpen 1A, B, or C, can affect the plant height without affecting the fruit of that plant. And maybe we can combine that with better agricultural practices to grow these indoors, these tall plants indoors. They used a host of tools for uh, finding orthologs of this Arabidopsis thaliana protein pin uh, formation gene, and they used transgenic maize, which uh, their hybrid was DH4866. They also used a variation of hydroponic cultures to start these uh, clones out. Uh, they used gene cloning with complementary DNA sequences. Uh, they had to construct their own gene-specific primers to target these specific uh, corn pin genes. They used a program called Kinase FOSS, which is finding phosphorylation sites uh, by prediction analysis. They used real-time polymerase chain reaction to take RNA and turn it into the uh, complementary DNA to ensure that they infected their uh, species of corn with this transgenic gene, uh, ZMPIN1. And they used a uh, chromatograph mass spectrometry, spectrometer to measure the amount of auxin in the different regions of the plant. What I wanted to show you is actual uh, lab data that this lab acquired. And I want to point out some specific things that will help uh, anyone reading this. So we have the wild type plants here, which are the controls. Um, they're normal corn. And we have the homozygous, or big A, for the uh, ZMPIN 1A mutants. And I'd like you to notice here that these mutants have extremely long roots. If you put the node equal, these roots are much longer than the wild type, but the homozygous recessive roots are normal. These are different stages of development for the plant, so a developing seedling, and then we get into a vegetative phase where we have uh, more leaves coming out, but we can still see that the roots for the homozygotes are extremely long for the Zimpin 1A mutants compared to wild type and even greater than the uh, homozygote recessive mutants. We can see further in development that these wild types are much taller in their shoots and uh, as we progress we will see that happens even further but it also comes with uh, some benefits to being short is your uh, stress response to drought tolerance. Um, once again, we have filled grown uh, corn, and you can tell the study has been happening. It was only published in 2018, uh, but they have been growing these transgenic corn plants uh, since 2011 to before they put out the study. Um, we can see that these homozygotes, their corn is developing lower, and they're much shorter than the wild type. And further along, we can see their drought tolerance. Um, the controls, or the groups here, were given different types of, uh, different amounts of water over different periods of time and they were allowed to uh, mature, and then they checked their roots. What they noticed is that the mutants, the homozygote mutants, created longer uh, roots, and they had even more adventitious roots protruding from the sides. Um, one of the ways we mentioned was mass spectrophotometry. 
the spectrometry to measure the amount of uh, IAA or auxin was present in the leaves or was able to be transported through the plant. And this was done by cutting uh, a, a shoot and applying auxin and then taking pictures of that auxin in the plant as it's transported. You can also then mush up some piece of that plant, whether that be root or shoot or leaf, and you can liquefy that, emulsify it, and put it into this mass spectrophotometer, and it will give you a readout of uh, whatever is in that liquid. So they found that the mutants had higher indolacetic acid or auxin simulation in their roots, and this is because the ZM pin 1A uh, produces a protein that's found in the membrane, and it's a transport protein for auxin. So, in turn, they opened up more channels for auxin to flow to the roots, and they decreased the amount of channels that auxin can leave the roots from. Um, so this created a, a buildup of auxin in the roots, and in increased their length and their mass. Um, this is all I wanted to show you from the paper. It was a really nice, really well written paper and they cited a few other papers uh, that I, I have in my research and I've read before. And um, what we can take from this is that corn can be modified using CRISPR and it can be uh, bred for uh, higher stability plants with bigger roots, uh, a better architecture for the height of the plant, and that there are more things that we can do to bring corn production to areas of the world that don't have the right climate for it. And we can be preventative in our agricultural practices for potential future drought or climate change in our location. Uh, today. And that is my presentation over uh, how to increase or decrease a plant's size using a CRISPR-Cas9 mediated system.